Welcome to Low Budget Otaku and today I'm talking to you about model kits, especially what you need to start building model kits. So if you don't know what a model kit is, it's basically a replica of a lot of different things. It can be a car, a boat, a giant robot, Gundam. Everybody loves some Gundam. Gundam is definitely one of the most popular model kits. So to give you some quick examples, this is a kit that I just finished yesterday. It's actually not finished, I finished building it, but it's very plain. You can clearly see it's a plastic figure, and it's fully articulated, but if you paint and if you give it some weathering, that is giving some um, damage effect, something like that, it can become a lot more realistic. Like for example, another model kit that I have here, these two are from Pacific Rim, this is Gypsy Avenger, and you can see that it looks a lot better than this. It's, I got it some weathering, I did put decals on, that is stickers that you can put f to give some more detail. Uh, most of them bring these stickers inside the boxes and it becomes a lot more better. Um, I have here another example, this is a Gundam of course, from Gundam Build Fighters. Um, this one is basically finished, I'm not going to change it, anything else. Looks great. This is a hybrid kit. Now, I'm not going to specify a lot about this, but there are some kits that have different scales of complexity that you can build. I'm just going to talk about the tools that you need to build them. Now, model kits come in these small boxes, at least high-grade ones, Some depending on the size of the kit and the complexity, the boxes can get bigger and bigger and bigger. And normally, what you get inside the box is this plastic sheets with these little sheets that where the parts are. Now, uh, these parts normally you need to open them. You have a lot of parts depending again on the complexity of the kit. And then definitely you have stickers. So you have a hero example of some stickers. This is a very simple kit so it doesn't bring a lot of stickers. Uh, but the more complex the kit is, normally the more stickers you're going to have. Then you bring an uh, instruction booklet. Now modern uh, model kits normally have translation of the, the steps, but older ones don't have it. They are fully in Japanese, but that's not a problem because the instructions tell you the letter of the sheet, where the pieces and the number of the piece, and then you just have to follow the instructions. There are visual instructions, so they are very easy to follow will not have a problem at all and again the instruction booklet will get bigger and more complex as the kit gets more complex but yeah in the beginning it can be a little scary when you look at this and my god how do i build this but it's, it's easy there's a method to the madness and again these kits will have great articulation and they normally are cheaper than the equivalent figure that you would buy so now, what do you need? So I'm going to start with the basic things first. So we need some cutters. Now, you should buy good cutters. Now, the first cutters that I bought was this, to build my first EVA model kit. I bought it, I had nothing. And I was like, oh my god, how do I build this? And I started searching and started buying things. So this is bad. This is good, this is a good cutter that I bought. It is thin, the thinner the cutter is, the more precise you can get and the spaces in these sheets are going to be very small between the piece and the place where you need to cut. So the thinner it is, the easier it will be to cut. Now, after you cut your piece off with the cutter, you need to remove the extra plastic that is going to remain from the sheet. And for that, you're going to need two things. Um, blade, so uh, dissection blade, and you're going to need a cutting mat. So the cutting mat is basically for not cutting your table. You're going to use this, and you're going to cut this. This is proper for it. You have lines in here, so you can align the piece. It will help you out a lot. And you're going to cut close as you can to the the plastic piece, and then you need to sand it down. Why? Because you will need leave after you cut the little numb mark. You will leave a little numb mark. You will leave a little bit of the plastic with a different color than the 
the rest of the piece and for that you need to sand and for that you can buy either buy some metallic sanders or you can get these these are sanding sticks these will wear down over time and you will need to buy new ones later on but they are much more practical than the metallic ones and you have them from different thickness so for the, this is very thick it will send a lot of the plastic off this is good if you still have a lot of plastic to send then you have these ones for example they have different sides with different thickness so this one is a little bit thick not as much of course as this one then you have this one is a little bit softer and then this one is good for polishing the, the piece and to really get a uniform um, finish then for example you have these blocks again is the same theory thick less thick polish and then you have sanding blocks with four faces this one is actually one of my favorites this is to replace this one that I had this one is was really good but it's all destroyed all used up because this one had uh, actually numbers easy to understand so thick less thick less thick less thick you would always go from one and then to the other and then to the other and then to the other to really get a uniform finish. You have a lot of variety of these things that you can buy. You can buy uh, individually of different thickness from different stores. So if you want to have an individual stick of different thickness, you can buy that. I bought the easier ones that are a combo set. So, but you need that to really remove those numbers and get a uniform finish. Next thing that you're going to need is tweakers. Um, a straight one and a curved one. Why two? Well, because when you're taking some pieces, sometimes you need to get pieces and put them in and you cannot do that with fingers. It's not that common, but, but it happens. And uh, sometimes this angle is not good this one will help you put the piece in and then sometimes you need to manipulate with two clippers so you should have two now i for a long time only used this one and i had no problems but it is easier if you have two so you should get these two kind of uh, now another thing that you're going to probably need and now we're going to start um, showing you some more advanced things panel lining Panel lining is, for example, you have these lines in the kit where you use paint to enhance the lines. That's what panel lining is. You're going to need a panel lining pen or you can use a brush and black paint. But if you use a panel lining pen, it's easier and the finished work will be better. So the easiest thing that you can get is a Gundam marker. These are not that expensive and they are easy to find and um, they're very good this is an extra thin one basically it has paint inside this is black one you can get gray white and other colors and you press in the line and actually the paint will start spreading by the line it's very easy to use it's very intuitive and it's very good so you should get one if you're going to start giving your kit a little bit more detail now, because you're starting to put paint and you're going to mess a little bit up or in places that you don't want to paint, you need some cotton swipes and some alcohol. This will help you remove the extra paint and give a more uniform finish, so you definitely should get some. But this, of course, this is the easiest part to get. Uh, you can get it in any superstore, uh, so no problem there. Speaking on paint, now we're going to get from the beginner level a little bit to more advanced level not advanced intermediate let's call it intermediate because with the stickers and with all everything that i just told you you already have a nice looking kit because the stickers will give you the eyes will give you a lot of the different things that the detail the kit needs but especially in the high grades sometimes you want to replace some colors you can give, give some details and for that you need paint and for that of course you have for the intermediate level hand brushes now a lot of people like me in the advanced level what they do is airbrushing i don't do airbrushing because i don't have the conditions i don't have the compressor i don't have the airbrush and i don't really have the good space for it but i do some hand brushing from that normally you need uh, 
some like regular brushes for long strokes, you need some fine brushes for details and I would advise this a flat brush for like some paint shipping details like if you want to add like a blood effect like I did in my EVA 03 review of Bardiel, check out that review if you want to check the kit where I used this um, to give some blood effect on the kit it was all done with this brush, that's why it's a little bit red <laughs> because I couldn't really clean it at 100% uh, but yeah, so you need a variety of brushes and then you need paints. Now, if you're a beginner or an intermediate level, I would advise acrylic paint. It's easier to remove, it's less toxic. I don't think it's toxic at all. Um, it's removable with water. You can work with it very easily. And then you have some of this brand, I love Mig Jimenez. And they sell a lot of different kits. So it's easier to buy the kit, gives you a good variety of colors, which for example is a very easy, good for beginners kit with Mecha Robot colors, with a variety of colors that you can get almost every color that you need. And then I got this one, Space Legion, it's more complex colors, I bought uh, specific for the blood red, but yes, polished matter is very good, gold, that is very good. Gold, it's a nice color, but it's very hard to stick, I don't know why, uh, so I don't really like gold. Uh, but then I bought some individual paints. Um, so yeah, I would advise this type of paint if you're beginning. Mickey Menes acrylic paint. You have other brands of acrylic paint. It's not a problem. Now, if you're painting, you're also going to need like a cleaner. Now, these cleaners, this is perfect for acrylic paints. Is that for um, cleaning your brushes? What I normally do because it consumes a lot. So I put just the beginning, uh, like in a plastic cup, like a, a small portion, and then I put a bit water, and that will help me clean the brush and not use too much. Uh, and it works fine. Okay, so you have paint, you have brushes, you have the cleaner, what we need more? So this can be very useful too. Uh, if you're painting and you want to dry, for example, a piece that you just painted uh, while you're continuing to work, you take the piece, you put here, you stick it on the tablet and it's drying. While you work on the other pieces, you can put multiple pieces drying. Very useful. I think it cost me like 10 to 15 euros. Uh, it's not bad, so uh, it works fine. And then you need, of course, these metallic cups to mix the paints. Uh, you can buy these very cheaply and you can buy a lot of them. So good for you. Another thing that you can get, not obligatory, is some masking tape. So you can isolate some part that you're painting and not mess up the things near it. Now this is more important in airbrushing and it works better in airbrushing than in manual brushing, but it can still help you avoid some mistakes, especially because if you paint things that you don't need then you will use the cut and swipes and the alcohol to remove uh, but it will be, can be a long time for you brushing and cleaning so this will help you get a, a cleaner job on the paint more things so these are like the main things but there are some more things that I would advise you know. if you're a beginner and you don't even want to paint again I already told you everything but if you want to paint you're already uh, getting some more uh, detail on your kits another thing that can help you is cement and this is extra thin and this is normal one now what cement is is a special glue for model kits and um, basically i only use this one this one the normal one i didn't really need to use uh, this one can help you in two things one is for example you have a piece that is always falling off your kit it doesn't need to move it's just some static part and it doesn't fit well and you want it to be more stable you can put this and it will glue that piece on and it's a softer glue so it's much better to use than for example super glue don't use super glue on your kids use this it will be much better um, and it will fix that part so it will be a little bit more stable and then the thing is for example if you have parts that stick together and again they don't need to move but you have that line that gap from the pieces and you don't want that gap to exist you can put a little bit of this and then sand apart a lot because this will fill in the gap 
between the two parts and where after you sand it you will start getting a uniform look between the two parts after a while that little gap will disappear so it will fill in the gap and after you sand the sanded part um, of the plastic will also fill in the, the gap and will do a, um, a very good polished finish and so if you want that extra detail you can do that uh, but yeah, for me, I mostly use it to glue some parts that are, are a bit loose and it will help with that. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about, that again, is not necessary, and, uh, but are some things that I would definitely advise you to get. One is gloves. Even though acrylic paint is good, um, it's not a problem, I rather be painting with gloves, with latex gloves, than with my bare hands. So I don't always be painting my hands, especially also when handling the glue, the cement. I rather have uh, gloves in my hands, so get that if you need. Of course, it shouldn't be no surprise that you need some scissors to cut the plastic where the sheets are on. And you should also have like always this, because it can help you measure some things. And of course, the last thing is this. This is a, a sheet organizer. Uh, some people, I saw some people saying that this is completely unnecessary. I agree, but I like to have it because it helps me organize the sheets. It makes me it easier in the small space that I have to build. And yeah, that's it. That's like all the things that I can think of that you need as a beginner. Now, you guys tell me if you're already a builder, if I missed anything, uh, tell me in the comment section below, what did I miss, was it informative, are you thinking of starting uh, to build model kits, do you like the concept of model kits, uh, do you prefer just action figures straight off, and um, tell me if I should do more videos like this. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, Hit the little bell icon to know when the next video is up and I hope to see you guys next time.